Hi everyone, this is Cliff. I'm doing really exciting work with quantum computers and quantum computing in the cloud and quantum machine learning. So quantum starts here. I'm working with many different quantum computing platforms and IBM has an incredible quantum platform, the Quantum Experience. Now before I go into quantum computing and show you how to build quantum computing circuits, I just want to run you through this really quick. So quantum computing is the use of quantum mechanical phenomena such as superposition and entanglement to perform computation. This is what quantum computers do. So the basis of the quantum computer here is the qubit. So the qubit is the quantum bit, quantum mechanical analog of a classical bit. In classical computing, the information is encoded in bits, ones and zeros, where each bit can have a value of zero or one. But in quantum computing, the information is encoded in qubits, which means that the qubit has really an unknown position. It could be one, it could be zero, it could be many different positions between one and zero. It can be one, it could be zero. We just don't know until we collapse that into the measurement. So now let's talk about superposition. Quantum superposition is the ability of a quantum system to be in multiple states at the same time until it is measured. So it's very difficult to understand here, but basically a qubit, until it's measured, you don't know if it's a one or a zero until it's measured. But measuring is the key to go from quantum back into classical to be able to measure. So now you know what superposition is. So how do we do superposition and create a quantum circuit? We use a Hadamard gate. Now what a Hadamard gate does is it basically brings the qubit into a superposition state where the probability of measuring zero is equal to the probability of measuring one. Now, I'm going to explain very quickly about entanglement. So now we go a little deeper and we talk about entanglement. So we can generate qubits and pairs of qubits that are entangled, meaning that the members of the pair exist in a single quantum state. And when you change the state of one qubit, it instantaneously changes the state of the other in a predictable way. This can even happen if separated by very long distances. So this gives you a very quick overview of what I'm doing here. And now let's dive deep in and create quantum circuits. This is very exciting. I'm really excited. I'm working with quantum computers. So I wanted to show you a little more about that. I have quantum computers in the cloud. And one of the cloud providers I'm using is IBM and the IBM Quantum Experience. If you look here, you can see these are my backends. I have 10 backends. I have simulators, but I have actual quantum computers too online. The thing here though is the queue of the jobs. So if you want to choose a quantum computer, it's best to choose one where there are no jobs so that you can immediately use it and you don't have to wait in queue. This is the main page. Now you can create a quantum circuit with Jupyter Notebook or you can use their circuit composer here, which is really cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new circuit here. And this is the circuit composer. It's the workspace. What's interesting about this circuit composer here also is we have a circuit editor which shows you the code behind the circuit composer and we in real time. So this is the workspace right here. Each line corresponds to one qubit. There are five lines here. So those are five qubits. 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. The 0 here means that the qubit has two states. It's either 0 or 1. But how this is different from a classical bit is that the qubit can have a 0 and a 1 state at the same time. But usually we first initialize everything to the 0 state. And you see this line is the measurement line. Before you measure the quantum state, you really know nothing about the quantum state so that you can measure it, so that you can analyze the quantum state. The y-axis is the index of the qubits. The x-axis along the line is the time. When you go from left to right, the time increases, the time passes. So here's what we can do now with the circuit composer in this workspace. Here we have a number of operations. We'll call them gates. 
Now I'm just clicking and dragging to apply the operation. This is a Hadamard gate. And then this is the measurement operation to measure the qubit. So this is a single qubit gate, a Hadamard gate, and this creates superposition. When you input zero, you're transforming that into zero plus one over the square root of two. So this creates a superposition of the quantum state. So I'm adding a Hadamard gate here. So this Hadamard gate changes the zero state to a zero plus one over the square root of two. So now that we've added the Hadamard gate, we should be in a superposition of zero and one. And then we can do one measurement of this qubit. So now when we run this, we should be able to see half the possibility of the qubit of being zero and half the possibility of the qubit being one. So we can save the changes here. So what's interesting here is you have visualizations. So you have the state vector, the density matrix, but this is great measurement probabilities. So it's going to actually do a visualization of the probabilities before you run the circuit. So it's showing that 50% of the state is 0, 50% of the state is 1. But we're going to go run right here. So we have simulators and we have all the quantum computer backends. And then we have the number of shots we can run. So we're just going to run on the simulator now. And then you see that we're running. It's pending. You can go in here and see the results. So now when we measure the qubit, we have half the possibility of 0 and half the possibility of 1. Now we're going to create a new circuit. And we're going to create a bell state using a C not gate to create entanglement. So we're going to add a Hadamard gate. Now we're going to add a C not gate here. This is the C not gate. So this is the control qubit and this is the target qubit. So then we're going to measure the bell state on the first qubit and on the second qubit. We'll save the changes and we'll run. So the Hadamard gate creates a superposition and then the C naught gate creates the entanglement. Now we're going to extend the circuit to more qubits and prepare and measure the GHZ state. So let's do this on three qubits. Okay, so we're creating a superposition state on the first qubit with the Hadamard gate. Now that changes the state to zero and one. And then we create the entanglement between the first two qubits with the C naught gate. And then we create another entanglement between the second and third qubits. So now we have a three qubit GHZ state. And then finally we can do the measurements. Measure the first qubit, the second qubit, and the third qubit. So three qubits is two to the power of three, so eight possibilities. But when we measure it, it's only going to consist of two possibilities the measurement of the probability see 0 0 0 1 1 1 I hope you enjoyed this introductory video. Please make sure to like, subscribe, share, send friends, leave a nice comment, ask any questions, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Yeah.